Hello everyone, Chris from 6++ here and welcome to episode 3 of Road to the ITT. For those of you who are new to this series, we are looking at 6++'s journey to the international team tournament at the beginning of February, which is going to be a 100 per or 100 team event, um, 500 people event in the Midlands run by the UKTC. In episode one, I spoke about how to go about selecting kind of like players for your teams. And then in episode two, we covered what sort of things to consider when choosing your armies. This episode is all about the preparation that you can put into um, kind of for the event and to help you hopefully perform to the best of your ability. As always, if you enjoy the content, please do consider giving us a like and a subscribe. Um, these things really do help put um, our content out there to the masses. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to create more sort of team stuff in the future. So if you guys are liking this, then let us know. So we'll definitely do it. Anyway, today we are going to be covering the following five things. So we're going to talk about setting goals and expectations. We're going to be talking about list design. We're going to be talking about how to go about practicing. We're going to talk about the sort of things you want to be doing whilst you're at the event. And then finally, there's a few little extra things for you just to consider. So, setting your goals and expectations. Now, we've all been there. We've all gone to an event and gone, oh, I really want a 3 2. I've got to get my 4 1 this weekend, whatever it may be. Um, there are so many things that are out of your control uh, when it comes to that sort of thing at an event. You might run into three or four bad matchups. You might round one, get paired into the best player in the world, and then win your next three games, and then in your final round, get paired into the player that lost to the best player in the world, but is still far better than you. So you go 3-2, even though you lost to first and second place. Right? There are just so many things out of your control. Um, that you want to be a bit more specific. Uh, so I could talk about us as a team, for example. Um, we are going there knowing that we would hope um, for a 3-2 because that's sort of the minimum level of players that we are. Um, but if we can go f and play into teams of equal skill level up to us, we hope our preparation will help us tip over the edge. And so, therefore, in each game, we're going to be able to analyse and say, was this a winnable game? And if we win the games that we feel are legitimately winnable, then that's fantastic. Maybe we'll be able to punch above. But for us, it will be a disappointing weekend if we go and lose to a team that we feel that, in hindsight, maybe we shouldn't have lost to. Maybe we made a mistake somewhere along the way. So, for us, we're going there with, uh, if we were setting goals of a, f a, um, a final score, We'd be thinking of 3-2, hopefully a 4-1. But within that, we're very much aware of the situation. And, you know, more than simple to get Team England round one and then Poland round five after someone else has been, right? Like, it just, these sort of things happen. Um, so, therefore, we try not to think about those too much. What we actually want to do is, and it says, it says here, think about what you want to achieve as a team to help you perform to the best of your goals. So for us, we're going there to try and play good 40k. And we want to be doing the things right, such as the pairings and the process of playing the team style event. Um, so we want to be thinking about how can we achieve those to the best of our ability. Other teams might be going there just to have an awesome time, hang out with some mates, drink lots of beer, have a great night out on the Saturday night and just play some fun 40k. In which case, you're going to have completely different goals. Um, and it's about, well, how can we achieve those? The only thing I will say is that you want to be really careful that and make sure everybody on your team is on the same page in terms of your goals. We um, had a, an event last year, I think it was, an eight player event. And we had probably different levels of expectations across the eight players. Um, and so that led to some frustrations because some people were taking a bit more seriously than others. So you just want to make sure everyone's on the same page 
um, before you kind of like go into the event. So list design, I mean, you could write write reams on this you could do hours of video content on this and i am by no means any sort of expert um but i will talk about the sorts of things that we've been considered or considering as we kind of go through these things so based off the last episode you now got your five armies and you got to be thinking what style of list do i want to be taking now obviously some armies out there just have a go-to obvious style which is best or one that suits a particular army um but a lot of the armies still have some play around i mean you take i don't you take chaos space marines right now there's lots of variations do you go one two three zero blobs of a curse cultist how many lords and chosen in rhinos do you want like there's so many different styles how many forge fiends so you've got to be thinking well actually what do i feel is best and the way you do that is, as we spoke about last time, going into your matrix and going, well, what are our weaknesses? What are we matchups? Um, maybe I can tech this in to try and counter or cater for that. Um, alternatively, you want to be thinking about, was well, this more of an attacker list or a defender list? Um, am I just going to sit on my board and take my points? I mean, in the case of chaos, in the case of chaos space marines. You want to actually be thinking about how can I create as big a differential as possible um, because this is an attacker list, one of the best armies in the entire game. They should be getting big wins for me. That being said, um, quite often when you go to a singles event, um, you might put a unit in because um, it will help you take care of a particular matchup. So, for example, a classic thing would be um, sort of like forward deploys, infiltrators, and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe that's not something you actually need if you're not planning on taking on those sorts of lists in your team's event, if you're not going to be working into those sorts of matchups. Um, I know back in the day it might be like, oh, I might bump into a like a psychic heavy army, so I'll take a Calexus assassin. Um, whereas in teams, you wouldn't have to do that. It's not relevant now, but it was back in the day. Um, so, yeah, so just think about, like, do I need, in my singles list, maybe I can just remove one 200 points and put it into something which is going to suit the style of the um, the list or not. There's always a big discussion on should you skew or should you not, and I think it falls into various camps. You've got some people who will say, well, we should take an army which is designed to kill the horde, and one army which is designed to kill the tank, and, and one army that's really, really hard to kill. Um, and there is that. The problem is that it actually is quite hard to pair that into what you want it to face. Um, any people who are worth their salt at pairing, if they see an anti-tank list, it's fairly easy to stop your knights from playing into that matchup. So actually it can backfire. I remember um, the year America won the WTC. Um, they won it having brought a list which was basically all of the custodies um, hurricane bolt to jet bikes and then aggressors with all of the shots because they predicted that other teams would have a few, maybe like one or two horde lists out there. And they did not. And this list basically ended up getting thrown under the bus and 20 owed um, in nearly every game um, just to make a clearer pathway for everyone else. Um, and quite often people actually end up going, you know what? We've done much better with well-rounded lists. It was just easier to pair and potentially easier to play with as well. So that's, I mean, that's my two cents. I would generally prefer to take more well-rounded lists. Obviously, the terrain is going to be big. Um, so at the moment, we're looking at UKTC terrain, and we're thinking we're looking at a light board, and a big thing for us designing lists is, well, how can we go about building a list that can go down as a first defender and potentially play on the light board and also the medium and heavy boards. Um, and then we're thinking, well, how would that change our, our list building? Um, for example, loan ops. So that's absolutely something you want to be considering. And when push comes to shove, you know what? Just play something you know. Um, you are far more likely to be accurate in terms of your pairings matrix and you're far more likely to do a better job for your team and being able to update your coach or captain if you are able to tell them 
what um, the scores are because you know how to play your list and you know the, the flow and the pattern. And I think for me, having recently started playing a couple of other armies, it's what's perhaps most noticeable is I'm, I'm finding it hard to predict when to push, when to play defensive and really understand how a game is flowing and how it's going to end up compared to someone like Eldar who I've been playing for a really long time and it's just far more instinctive. So, as I said, when you're not quite sure, just stick to something you know. <clears throat> so, practice. Um, you want to try and get your reps in to a variety of different matchups. There might well be some matchups you don't really know. Try and play those. Um, there might be some matchups you know that are bad for you. So, you've got two options there. Either you just sack it off and go, I'm never playing it at teams. Um, one thing that like WTC teams do is they take matchups that they know are bad and they practice, practice, practice them until they can turn it into a much more of a drawish or even win matchup and work out that path that is maybe not particularly noticeable. Um, and this can then throw the opposition's matrix out the window. So just get as many reps into a variety of different um, armies as you can. And uh, obviously TTS is ideal for this. It's all about testing list ideas. I mean, hey, take something like Eldar. You've got our generic two, three night spinner lists out there, but maybe teams is the place for one or two Wraith Knights. I, mean, I doubt there are many armies that go down a teams event and go, oh, two Wraith Knights, no thank you. Um, or should I say there'll be lots of people who play who go, I don't want to play that. It takes quite a specialist list to be able to beat that down. So... Um, have a think about these things. Maybe put them put them out onto TTS and just try them out. And just you could be surprised. Teams is a really exciting place to try out some different lists, which could surprise people. Um, team training days are a great idea. Um, two of our teams, well, one of our teams has already had one. We've our fires have got one um, Saturday coming, um, and we're gonna get down. Play some, uh, play some games into each other. We've got five of us there, so we're going to do 1v1, 1v1, and then the spare person is kind of there helping anyone who needs it, just really analysing the games and matchups, and we're trying to play the best 40k that we can so we understand the matchups as best as we can. Um, and obviously it's a great chance to bond. And then finally, have an idea of pairings. If you've never done pairings before, definitely sit down and just go through the, the setup and the motions of pairings. I know I find that the very first pairings of a weekend, much like my first game of weekend, I'm actually quite rusty um, and it feels a bit blurry in my head. Thankfully, with your first pairings, you can have basically created an entire um, chart of flow chart of like what's going to happen if they do this, if you do that, and you can kind of cover all the eventualities, but just make sure you've done some pairings um, beforehand just so you understand the process is just because that can absolutely um, make a gap between skill level larger or smaller, depending on how well you pair. So we're at the event. How are we going to do it? Right. You want everyone paying attention at pairings. Um, quite often you, I've had a situation where I'm pairing and the first pair have got their game and board and off they go. And they're just often setting the terrain up and they're not part of the process you want your team there you want everyone's point of view to an extent and i say to an extent because you don't want four or five people all giving their opinion because as the person in charge of the pairings you have a call to make you have a judgment call to make and i've absolutely been times where i've had a couple of people um like maybe sway me one way and actually it would have been better if I'd done it my way just because I'd done the pairings a bit more and I had a bit more of a gut instinct on these sorts of things. So what you want to be thinking of, yeah, is take on board ideas. Um, and conversely, if you're one of those people being asked, it's nothing worse than, oh, I don't know, I don't mind it, I can do it. Like give the player or give the captain, your pairings person, like a clear indication. Do you feel this is good or bad? Um, indecision can be like really awkward for the pairings captain to try and navigate. Once you've got your pairings, and this is something that I don't think many teams do apart from the top teams, once you've got your pairings, you'll have a little team huddle and you want to reiterate and go over again 
what each player's expectation is. Okay, so each player will then go to their table, know that they they should be getting a fifteen five. Their game is going to be probably heading for a draw, or actually they're going to be one of those players who have been thrown under the bus, or they're in a losing situation and they need to scrap for every point that they can. And if they can turn things around, then. Um, that'd be really good for the team. Just every player knowing what they're supposed to achieve will help focus them. Um, and it also makes my next point um, kind of, well, sorry, my last point kind of more valuable, which is when you're done with your game, um, you want to be going around checking up, like, what do you think your score is going to be? be? Is it a 10 10? Is it a 14 6? Whatever. And updating everyone else so we've got a clear picture. Um, the reason for this is because it can affect how you play your game. Um, we've all been there in matches, even if it's single matches, where we're like, oh, I could be aggressive now or I could just hold back. Do I push now or do I not? And it might well be that your team is losing, the matrix hasn't gone to plan, and you're in a situation where you could go for it, which could get you a bigger win, or you could play it safe and have a smaller win. And the team needs you to go for it, take that risky play, because without it, you're going to lose anyway. And that is why you want people constantly around talking to each other and updating each other and making sure everything is kind of everyone's on the same wavelength about what the situation is. And that penultimate point I made there on the PowerPoint is um, keep updating your matrix when you get a chance, such as the Saturday evening. You can learn lots of information. Um, think about how your timings go. Game one, you already would have done your pairings practice because you would have found out your draw on the Wednesday before. Game two, you've got lunch break to prepare for, although that's only going to be five, ten minutes, knowing Zach. So um, you've got to try and get that done quickly. Game three, you've got hardly any time at all to prepare for. Um, so actually, as you're going, if you can keep updating a general matrix, um, for the teams you're playing, that might help you um, have a better understanding. So Saturday night, maybe just update it slightly. Oh, I thought this much that was good. It's actually terrible. We'll just quickly change that, and then it will help it um, make it clear on the uh, for the Sunday. And finally, um, definitely do some matrixes before the event. Now, if you're going to an event with like ten teams, I would highly recommend if you're trying to take it seriously to do your matrix for all the nine other teams because then when you go to the event um you're there you're already you don't need to be worrying about these sorts of things um you're just you can go straight into it with a hundred play or 100 team event that's obviously not really like not realistic um i can guarantee you the top teams there will be doing their matrixes for all the other top teams there so ignite will do one for all the international teams going for example just so they're already prepared. Our approach is we will do it for some of the top teams and just not because we're expecting to play them, but because it will help us to start to build a picture in our heads of how matrices will go. We've only got five options. You're going to expect a lot of teams are going to be taking Eldar and um, CSM because there's no balance data state in play. Um, so with that in mind, you're then probably going to have Necrons. You're going to expect most teams who are taking it reasonably seriously to have those three armies. The other two are a bit trickier, but at least if you can get into the habit of doing a few of these before the event, just having four or five done maybe for all the main armies out there, then it will just make life easier when it comes to the actual, the actual showdown. The best part of 40k is um the fact that you are there as a team um and it's it's just strangely different like when you're there with a group of mates or a big team at a singles event you obviously care how they do but you are also still just on your own to some extent you're also slightly in competition with them as well and it's just a completely different vibe to when you are a team of four five eight whatever and you've all got each other's backs and you're all desperate for them to do well and if someone messes up, you know, there's no sense of sort of like feeling bad or even even feeling good about it because, you know, they're just, they're your teammate and you just want to support them. 
So therefore, you want to do as much as you can as a team. So stay together. I know one of our teams have all got they've got a team B and Airbnb. Have a team meal together. Just get all that quality time together. Most likely, you're having a great time with your mates, so you want to make the most of that. People won't hit their matrix scores. Okay, like someone in your team, every chance is going to have a bit of a bad weekend. Use the fact that you are a team to pick them up. It's, um, as I said, it's it's so positive that you are able to do that. You're going to band around and uh, re-support each other and make the most of that. And then, I must admit, there is a there is a slightly different option. Sometimes, and it depends on the personalities, right? And this is about, if you're a captain, understanding the people you're with and that sort of thing. But sometimes people are just having a bad weekend. Maybe their army isn't quite working how they thought. And here it might well be that for the greater good of the team, you just want to throw them under the bus. Now, I'm not saying oh, they've lost all their games. I'm now going to make them feel even worse about themselves by giving them a horrible time without their permission. You obviously have to talk to them about this. But it might well be that if you've got someone who's just having a tough weekend, it's better for your team for them to go down first and just take out whatever the bad matchup is. Um, I believe at the WTC, the England one, Nick Nanavati, was very much that train of thought. No, they've got a top, they've got a terrible matrix, or they're having a bad time. Just throw them under the bus, get them out of the way. Slightly less relevant in five mans compared to eight mans, but it is a legitimate um, process or choice for you to make. So definitely consider that. Um, but again, don't, don't do it. Don't do it without speaking to them first, because otherwise you might you might have a bit of falling out there. So there we go. Um, there's just some quick fire thoughts on a whole host of different issues. Um, this submission is Sunday. I'm filming this on Thursday. It'll be out on the Friday. Um, no data slate, sadly. Um, we'll have a team practice on the Saturday. List submission is then on the Sunday. Lists will be out on the Monday, and what I will try and do is get this video out on the uh, maybe the Wednesday um, or the Thursday. Hmm, not sure. I'll try and get it out early just so people can have more of an opportunity to hear my thoughts. What I'll be doing is I'll be going through the um, the top teams and what they're bringing. Um, but also feel free to check out the um, That 6 Plus Plus show, which is um, our podcast, goes live on uh, Tuesdays at 8.30, and we will be talking about the ITT, um, and the list will be out, so we'll probably be having a good discussion about it then as well, and maybe giving some sort of like our thoughts and tips, because there ain't no data slate to talk about. Um, so yeah, that's uh, all for now. hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you again very soon. Take care.